problem? Yeah. Okay, so the one that's over this ball, so it's a two piece system. You got the steel board, which attaches to the back, and then the seal assembly, which attaches to the tubing, that stabs inside the seal. Hello. I forget the sign up sheet. Oh. What do I do? I check out your name uh, at the end of the class. Okay. But now let's let's wait and oh should check out your name at eleven oh five. Okay, Yahweh Sheng. For the case of VG greater than VL, should lambda L be less or greater than HL? For the case of VG greater than VL, which one is higher? Lambda L or HL? Which one is higher? You think HL is higher? Are you sure? Maybe. Very likely. Okay. Tell me, Tope. Which one is higher? VG greater than VL. The actual velocity of gas is greater than actual velocity of liquid. So, lambda L will be higher or lower than HL? Oh, too difficult. Shall I open the lecture notes for you to see? You still remember this one, right? Vg greater than Vl, Hl greater than lambda L. Can we top it? Look at the board. You like that? What about this? Vg less than Vl, Hl less than lambda L. Good. Okay. So uh, for these two three minutes. Let's review some material for the exam. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're what is the formula for frictional pressure loss? What is the formula for frictional pressure loss? What is that L? Length on the pipe? Uh, Akin, what is formula for frictional pressure loss per unit length? Minus DPDL subscript F. Arya Shadi, what is the frictional pressure loss per unit length? 2F rho V over V. 2F rho, rho V. V. Okay, V square. Over D. Okay, correct. Okay. Pass, fail, fail. <laughs> then, what is the formula for gravitational pressure loss per unit length? Minus DPDL subscript G. Um, rho, rho E sine theta. Okay, correct. Um, and uh, what is the formula for a Reynolds number? <coughs> what else? How do you arrange those things? Wrong. Okay, Siri, what's the formula for a Reynolds number? Okay, correct. You know what is the formula for Prandtl number? Prandtl number, PR. 
Vega, what is formula for quantum number? Okay, open the book. Yahweh Sheng, you don't have lecture note. What is formula for quantum number? Open your lecture note. Or the slide. Did you print out the slide? Come on, come on, come on. Okay, right now is 11.06. Let me check the attendance. Of course, for those of you who have excuse to leave the class, it will be fine. So, Raymond, it's 11.06. You said university excuse. University excuse is for going to the job fair. Are you going to do the job fair? I was the first person to talk. I didn't do Okay. Raymond. I -Y, Raymond. <laughs> Next, Anders, Siri, Une, Vega. Oh. Okay. Danny, Danny or Danny? D A. Oh, D A N N Y. Tell me, Tope. <laughs> is that correct or I should? It's correct. Ekin? Yahweh? Aya? Is that correct? Yahweh? Correct? Okay, so this will be the attendance and this is actually on the video already. So you are in the class and we know it. So question so, so far? No question, right? Oh, printer number. What is the formula for printer number? Yeah, yeah. Printer number. P R A N D T L. Printer number. That made me Google it. Mu? CP something? O L K? Maybe? Arya Shadi, what is the formula for printer number? You don't know? Yahweh Sheng, can you Google it? Akinolu. CP me okay. Alright. Alright. And uh, what is the formula for national number? You don't know? It is difficult. Uh, Yarashadi, what is the uh, formula for national number? HD okay. okay, okay, correct. Uh, Raymond Ecorita, what is the unit of thermal conductivity? Mm. Anders, what is the unit of thermal conductivity? Um, okay, Siri, what is the unit of thermal conductivity? I don't know. Unit? Thermal conductivity. What? Over? Meter? Over Kelvin? You like that? Okay. Vega, what is the unit for uh, convective heat transfer coefficient? Um, okay. <laughs> Danny, what is the unit for convective heat transfer coefficient? Convective heat transfer coefficient H, small h. Um, mm, tell me, Tope, what is the unit for. <laughs> you know this. Uh, Raymond, what is the unit for. What is the unit for convective heat transfer coefficient? Heat transfer coefficient. Small h. What per meter square per Kelvin? Arya Shadi, what is the unit for overall heat uh, overall heat transfer coefficient? Capital U. What per meter square per Kelvin? Correct. Uh, okay. What other unit do you want to know? All right, Yahweh Sheng, what is the unit for Prandtl number? Uh, 
Your version. What is the unit for Prandtl number? Unitless, correct. You cannot find it. It's unitless. Okay. So, what is the formula for superficial frictional pressure loss per unit length for liquid phase? Tomitope. Minus dpdl subscript sl. Minus dpdl subscript sl. It is 2f rho v squared over d, but that f will be expressed as uh, Blasius type equation. Got that? 2f, oh, formula, formula, not unit, formula. Yeah, that formula. So, what is the unit then for minus dpdl over l? PSI per meter or Pascal per meter? Pascal per meter. Anything is fine. Do you know the conversion between PSI to Pascal? I think one PSI is about 6,894.95 something yep. Pascal. Mm -hmm. Plus 101, what, 325. Do it give you the unit conversion in the exam? Yes. yes. No, I don't give you any unit conversion in the exam. Are you informed that I will not give you any unit conversion in the exam? No. Now you're informed that I will not give you any unit conversion. How many miles is one kilometer? 1.6 one one what? 1.6 kilometer is one mile. Oh, okay. So any unit conversion, you have to know it. Right. How many barrel we go to? How many gallon? Or how many gallon equal to how many liter? Or how many barrel equal to? You need to be able to convert from barrel to cubic meter because at the end you will need to use everything as high. The unit conversion? No, no, I don't give you anything in the time. There's just barrel, gallon. I tell you now. Right? Oh, you have a sheet sheet. You can write anything to pages. Not a problem. And you want to spend time at least six hours on writing those things. That's why we don't have homework. Right? You don't have homework. You should be grateful for that. Thankful, very thankful for that. Right? So, if you have um, X and Y, can you calculate H altitude? Or can you use the chart? Oh, the chart will be provided. Nice, right? Okay. All right. End of the review. Oh, question from Ray, from Raymond. Yes. 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 It will tell us whether we have annular flow or not. If it is not annular, it could be intermittent or this bubble flow. Then, how do we tell? Then we then use transition C to tell if it's flow. No, 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 no. Then we skip transition C. Then we go to transition D. Transition D will tell us if it is intermittent or this bubble flow. Transition C will tell us whether we have stratified smooth or wavy. If you find that it's stratified wavy, you're done. If you, are, if you find that it's stratified smooth, but it is double flow, you still have to check transition K. And reference parameter Reference parameter? Which transition are you talking about? Transition K? Or transition K 
Transition A. Okay, yes, we have VT. Okay, if VG is greater than this right hand side, Tomitope, what is the flow pattern? If VG, if VG square is greater than that, or if we, if left hand side is greater than this right hand side, what flow pattern do you have? Stable stratified or unstable stratified? Unstable. Unstable, right? Okay. How do you know that? Because it is a comparison between such and false, right? Such and false go up when VG go up, right? Alright. So, transition A, B, C, all this is next act, not this coming exam, okay? Exam after this. Oh, can you calculate pseudo single phase flow? If you know liquid, viscosity, gas viscosity, can you mix it? How do you calculate mixture viscosity for the case of gas liquid? Hmm. Weighted based on no slip liquid hole up. Yes, weighted based on no liquid, no slip liquid hole up. Can you make your uh, program? that calculate x and y automatically or something but you don't need to do that, you can calculate it right now alright, we have transition D right transition D dimensional form is that's one okay. dimensionless form is this t square greater than something 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 and that t square is this okay transition c if left hand side Greater than right hand side, we have wave, stratified wave V, right? Because the force that stabilizes is like viscous force, force that make it unstable, create a wave is a velocity. Velocity of the gas phase. From Jeffrey, Jeffrey uh, model. Left hand side is like shear force, right hand side is a viscous force. In addition to know this, you need to know which page number has this equation when we have open book. Right? Or you have to print this out. Okay. No, this time is not open book. This time is not open book. No, 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 no. The main reason that I don't want to do it open book first time is so that you write the equation and those equations go into your brain. So that when I grade it and you didn't do well, I can be more generous than usual and understand that these, these folks already know it. Maybe just don't have enough time to do it or something. Less practice or something. So that is for me to be able to give you more point. More point doesn't mean you get a lot more. Okay. Alright, transition D. T squared. Okay, let's, let's take a look at, look at it closely. Left hand side, DPDL subscript SL. This term we can calculate without knowing liquid height. True or false? Anders. Do we need to know liquid height? True. Okay. What about this term, Anders? Do we need liquid height? Oh, how do you calculate AG tilde if you don't have liquid height? How do you calculate AG tilde in general? AG tilde, you have 
this equation, right? Can you calculate? Can you calculate it? Do arc cosine. What do we put in here? Radiant or degree? Radiant. If you put degree, wrong. Okay. So arc cosine is oh, not radiant or degree. The answer from arc cosine will tell you the angle, right? So. The answer will be radiant. If you set your answer to be degree, wrong. Because all this part is kind of work with radiant. The derivation is from radiant, not degree. Do you know how to change degree to radiant in your calculator? I hope so. <laughs> Transition A, B, C, D. Okay. We know all that. So transition D, you need liquid height before you can check transition D, right? What about transition K? Do we need liquid height? Danny? Which term depends on liquid height? This, right? HL. Very obvious, right? VL also depends on liquid height. Okay. Transition K. Hmm. This one, right? Vg Anders, is that depend on liquid height? Yes, this is the actual area, right? Flow rate divided by actual area, then we get Vg. So Vg is based on liquid height. Transition B, of course, we need liquid height, right? Transition A, um, we also need liquid height, right? We need to know actual gas velocity. Your version, how do we get liquid height? Huh? How do we get liquid height? Um, HL is liquid height, yes. How do we get HL? From the chart, yes. Do you have the chart? If you don't have the chart, your calculator should do some calculation and get liquid height. But I don't expect you to do that. Okay, I'll give you the chart instead. Okay. But actually your calculator can do that. If it is numerical method class, I have asked you to do that, but this is not that class. Alright, so X and Y do we need to know liquid height to calculate x and y, Akin? Yes. Uh, Tomi, Temi Tope, do we need to know liquid height to calculate x and y? No. 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 Correct. We don't need to know. This term, we don't need to know liquid height, right? It doesn't use actual velocity, it uses superficial velocity. Why? doesn't need actual velocity, so we don't need to know liquid height. To calculate x and y, after we get x and y, we use the chart. From the chart, we get liquid height. Then we can check each transition. We check transition A first. You cannot jump to check transition B. Okay? If you do that, wrong. Get zero. Okay? Alright. You have seen the criteria transition A, B, C, D. Mm, no, 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 they are not in this exam. Uh, X and Y can be in this exam. You, you should be able to read the chart, this exam. The transition A, B, C, D is not in this exam, but X and Y can be. Uh, okay, first question. Why should the procedure to make the dimensionless form be shown in detail? Raymond. Why should I show you the the procedure how to make the dimensionless form. Because it is going to be in the exam, yes, okay. Because it is going to be in the exam. Look at this, transition B. Why do I show you how to go from here, dimensional, right, to here, dimensionless? Why is that? Because it is going to be in the exam. Not this exam, of course. 
Another reason is you really want to know from okay, there's a difference between empirical model and mechanistic model. Mechanistic model, we do the prediction based on uh, physics. Okay. Empirical model have to see like pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, pi 4, and then do some kind of dimensional analysis and find which value is the dimensionless va var variable that governing the, the phenomena. That is pure empirical, right? But when we do it this way, we get the dimensionless form that has the physical meaning behind it. That is based on combined momentum equation. Right. So this, this dimensionless form is different from the one come from pure empirical analysis because there's a physical meaning behind it. There's a derivation. Okay. There's a governing equation that is not just come from nowhere, but there's a reason for those governing equations, right? We do some kind of compared force. Correct? So when we know those parameters, we can plot this kind of graph. Okay, you see this graph? Graph of dimensionless form to check A, B, C, D. Why do you need to use empirical equations and correlations in gas making? Only in the well, why do we still use empirical correlation when we do fluid flow? How much does it cost for one license of Olga? Enough. I can I can tell you. I think I tried to get a donation and like twenty license of Olga. I could be wrong, but it's forty five million or twenty million dollars or something. It's expensive. Okay, it is expensive. Let me ask you this: There are two ways to do the calculation. Very accurate way and some kind of rough estimation. Do you need to know both? Yes. So that we can check if those guys who use very sophisticated model get it done right or not. Right? What about your answer? That's my answer. What about your answer? Why do they still use some kind of correlation, empirical model? Is that uh, what, what kind of empirical model? Bayes and Brill, Macritchie Brill, or all those. I'll show you which model is better. Okay. They are fast, they are cheap, accessible, but if you want to do better, do this. They need a good reason to hire someone like you who have PhD, right? This is one of the reasons. Oh. HR, you, you're talking to HR. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's continue. Why do we care about dimensionless at all? Number one, it gives a general form of equation and flow pattern map that we can use easily. Number two, it tells us which parameter is actually matter, which parameter to concentrate when conducting experiment. If we want to advance the model, we need to know which parameter to concentrate, which parameter that we don't need to concentrate on. Okay. And there are too many parameters to be tested in experiment. Dimension analysis through mechanistic model help in conducting an experiment. Right? So if we know in stratified flow that X and Y governing liquid height. If you want to do some tests, you are not going to change like pipe diameter, pipe diameter, pipe diameter, chain viscosity, chain viscosity, chain viscosity, because that's, that's this some one way to doing it, but it's not based on like uh, governing equation. So if you have governing equation first, it's better. Buckingham pie theorem versus dimensionless group from mechanistic model. Which one is better? Of course, dimensionless group from mechanistic model is more relevant to the phenomenon. Buckingham pie theorem help but may not be relevant, but mechanistic model will be more relevant. Okay, flow pattern determination. The process needs to be done in sequence. You cannot skip, okay? 
Number one, determine the equilibrium level and arterial parameter. First step, calculate all those. HL, Tudor, AP, Tudor, AG, Tudor, all those. Okay. That is, first you get HL, Tudor from the chart, right? After you use the chart, we can calculate everything else that is the geometric parameter, correct? So, then we check the stratified to non-stratified transition battery. If the flow is stratified, then we check if it is stratified smooth or stratified maybe. That's second step. If we check and it is non-stratified flow, then we check transition B, transition to analog flow, H altitude or greater than 0.35 or not. If it is greater than 0.35, it, it is not analog flow. Okay. Number four, if the flow is not analog, check intermittent to this bubble flow. So T squared greater than something, that's what it is. So let me go back to that T squared and answer your question too, okay. Question, question, question. We cannot. But we can say transition zone is just based on that HDL. Title Dabler model, the liquid height is based on stratified flow. We assume that it is stratified flow. Whether or not it's stratified, we assume that it is stratified. After we assume that it is stratified flow, then we check if it is stratified or not. We check if it, if it is analog flows. We just get the flow pattern. That's first step. But we don't get the pressure drop yet. Okay, pressure drop will come soon. But is it, valid? it is valid. How do we know that it is valid? Okay, this is capital T equation, okay, for transition D. We, we, can, we cannot get uh, the pressure drop yet, but we can know the flow pattern. I know that it is valid because there's a comparison between the model prediction and measurement. All right. So in the flow pattern map, we have model prediction. And the point is like measurement, right? In the region that they predict to be stratified flow, we found stratified flow. Good, right? In the region that we predict analog flow, or intermittent flow, we find intermittent flow. Okay, so there's a comparison between experiment and the prediction. And they kind of match. Not perfect, okay? Not perfect means, look at this. Uh, you see this white symbol. Measurement tells us that it is elongated bubble flow but both model predict it to be stratified smooth. Error, right? So near the, near the boundary, it doesn't really work. That it, it works, but it's not perfect okay, near the boundary. So let's take a look at uh, analog flow. HL over D equal to 0.35 is this, is this line, okay? Sometimes we have circle, you see that circle. So near the battery, it's not right, it's not perfect. It's good, it's very good already, but it's not perfect. Okay. Uh, let's go back a little bit to talk about the chart. There are several kind of chart and okay, in what page do you find this chart? In your book. Tomitope. Temitope. Which page? Akin, you find it first? 71. Okay, is this chart for only horizontal flow or it can be used for minus 10 to 10? Akin. It says title and 
wrong. This chart is only for horizontal flow. Do you find another chart that can work from minus 10 to plus 10 degree? Which page number is that? There's one that's the same page. Same page, right? But it's on the top. So if you use the one that plot against x, that is only for horizontal. If you use the one that plot against h altitude, it is for minus 10 to 10. Okay? The way to use is it is a combination of several parameters on the same chart. Capital F is for transition A. Okay, you will still remember capital F? Capital F when we do transition A. It is this formula, right? Basically, if you have this formula and you plot between F and H altitude, what you get is uh, this line. That's capital F. Okay, so if you use that chart, if you use the chart, first step is to check transition A, which is capital F versus X or H altitude, and it is for this line. Okay, after you check this line, then you check, okay, let's say it is not stratified flow. Then you check transition B. Transition B is this versus H altitude or X. If it is this side, then it's annular. If it is this side, it doesn't mean that it is this bubble or intermittent. You have to check transition D again. When you check transition D, it's a plot between capital T and X, right? So when you check this line, you have to check capital T and X. You can use formula and chart, they are the same. Uh, formula could be more accurate. Okay, chart will be quicker, of course. Okay. Yes. Imagine that you have your points and your uh, the, the 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 flow pattern near the D, but this is intermittent. Can we say, for example, ninety percent it is intermittent and ten percent? You share what flow? What transition? Transition A. No, 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 you already got it, and the point is the final point that you have over there, for example. So then, after I check transition A, I already check transition B, and then I check transition D, yes. and the part is in intermittent, yes. then it is intermittent. Because it is near the, uh, the boundary, could we say like 10% is better bubble or? Mm. Mm. You just say intermittent. You don't say this by bubble or anything. We don't have a capability to say what is the uncertainty on the prediction. And you can see from the map that it's not that accurate. And I don't know what percentage, what is the probability that it's something else. And in fact, you may see the flaw of this kind of model. Okay, okay. the parameter defined for y, x, f, k, t is here. Okay. If you have double flow, Use the chart to check transition C. It's not enough, right? Okay, K is for transition C, and what is K? You go back, you see transition C, K is this thing. Use that, it is not enough. In addition to that, you want to check this. This is transition K from Bunny and all, which is not plotted in your chart. It's not here. Okay? If you use only this and it stratifies very, okay, you're fine. If you use only this and it stratifies smooth, you still have to check transition K, flop number. Mm. Okay, let me ask you this. If I start at VST equal to point 0.1 and I increase liquid phase, when it moves from stratified to intermittent, does it change immediately, abruptly, or continuously? I would think it is kind of continuously. Continuous means table bubble length may be long. Okay, table bubble length may be long. 
but it has a little bit of slab body forming. When you move further in this region, then you have big, larger, longer and longer slab body length, something like that. So when you go from intermittent flow to this bubble flow, does it change like, okay, from, from this flow to completely disperse? I don't think so. I think the phenomena is like gradual change. So when you go from intermittent flow to this bubble, we flow more liquid, right? When we flow more liquid, the Taylor bubble shrink, 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 shrink until none. Okay, and then it's this bubble. So the, the, the phenomena change gradually, not abruptly. Okay. Uh, okay, this, this graph. A oh, question? question. So when you use the term, it's developing. Is that what you mean? Like, not changing? Like, you know what? The time you ask us a question about 